Hi everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we are going to talk about what are the first things that you need to know if you want to become a data scientist. Data scientist has been a term that has been thrown around in the industry, specifically in the tech field in the recent years, especially after the Harvard study called it the sexiest job of 21st century. You can see that it has gotten so much attention because of that and also there has been obviously some of the good signs to being a data scientist. So because of that, there's a lot of information on the internet. Some is good, some is okay, and some doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to share the self-learning roadmap to become a data scientist. Some of the things that have personally helped me transition and what I've learned over the years from my experience. So before we jump into the video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that the YouTube algorithm helps me reach to more people like you. So talking about what is the first thing you need to learn? Well, let's take a step back. So in terms of becoming a data scientist, first thing I would suggest is to figure out. Data science is an umbrella term. The term data scientist is used very liberally. That means it doesn't mean the same thing to one person versus the other. What it means to the a different organization, it would mean separately to another organization. The term data scientist varies from company to company. In some company, a data scientist would be an applied scientist cross, you know, software engineer versus in another company, a business analyst could be called as a data scientist. So keeping in mind, what I would suggest you to do is that first figure out what exactly you need to do. Look at this diagram and figure out where exactly you want to see yourself in the diagram. There is one in the middle, which is more of a generalist data scientist who knows uh, everything about machine learning, computer science and mathematics. Then there is a more technical, which is, you know, which goes into applied scientist. There is machine learning side and there is more uh, in the bottom, which is more of a data analyst focus or business analyst focus, which is more business oriented or, you know, analytics oriented. So first thing you need to do is to figure out where exactly you want to see yourself in that Venn diagram. Recently, everyone has been talking about ChatGPT, Stable Diffusion, Delhi 2, together with advance of powerful machine learning Python libraries and end-to-end -end data science platform. Data scientist roles are becoming more and more of high level, stretching across different parts of a data science pipeline. I think data science roles are becoming more full stack, especially now with the economic downturn and companies wanting to cut down cost, more and more companies are wanting someone who can do basically of everything from you know scratch to finish you know who can create the data pipeline understand the business problems implement the algorithm and take it to the production as well so today in this video we will talk about what full stack data science is what are the required skills for an end-to-end -end project and how to learn these skills in 2023 with a clear roadmap that we will cover later in this video what is full stack data science a full stack data scientist is someone who has a reasonable amount of skills and experience in all of these steps in a data science pipeline from ideation, data collection, engineering, and model development and deployment to generating business insights and data storytelling. So you have two options. One is you can go back to a school, you can enroll yourself in a data science degree program, and you can follow through the program, that curriculum, and then graduate with a degree and build some projects and then look for a job. And the other option is the second option, which is something that I did and a lot of the people end up doing, which is, you know, self-learning route. And that is through learning through the batch of, uh, you know, bunch of courses and then YouTube videos and books. So let's get started with the roadmap. The roadmap can take anywhere between three months to an year to complete, depending on your pace. If you have pre-existing knowledge of linear algebra, calculus, Python, you could definitely complete this entire roadmap in less than three months. But on an average, it should take you around six months to complete it if you don't have the prerequisite knowledge. And if you want to take your time and get really your foundation super strong, then it could take you somewhere close to one year to complete this entire roadmap. So you can choose to go at your own pace. So the first stage in the roadmap is math, more specifically statistics, probability, linear algebra and matrices, etc. Now, a lot of other roadmaps, or in fact, a lot of beginners, they might think or ignore this stage completely. 
they might just skip to the maybe you know machine learning course stage directly but i would highly recommend that you don't skip this stage i would definitely recommend actually you know starting out with the math first not only because we see a lot of technical interviews from various companies which are hiring machine learning engineers or data scientists they have started actually to ask fundamental maths questions or actually ask the math behind certain machine learning algorithms so these are very common questions in technical interviews when companies are hiring machine learning engineers or data scientists so these are the skills that you definitely need to have and whether if you are implementing different machine learning models in the future it really really helps to have this foundational math knowledge so when it comes to learning the math for machine learning there are so many useful resources out there you can start with descriptive and inferential statistics course by udacity followed by linear algebra course by udemy another really important book is the elements of statistical learning so this is a really well known book already within the machine learning when it comes to learning the math for machine learning so i would highly recommend this as well so now going on to the next stage which is the programming and more specifically we are talking about python language you will also need to learn fundamentals of data structure as well a lot of people have will argue on this they might think uh, okay for machine learning you don't really need to know about the data structures but actually it's very important for you to have the foundation of python data structures because you definitely are going to be using data structures in some form of the code that you are going to be writing so it's important that you guys know it obviously you don't need to know super in depth information about a, you know that a software developer would have of data structures but it's important that you know exactly how to use python language it's very important that you know how to use the important libraries for machine learning such as numpy pandas matplotlib scikit-learn seaborn etc these are some of the most important libraries that are you know very important to start your machine learning course now let's move on to the third stage the third stage is doing a machine learning course now you can start off with google scratch course for machine learning or there is ton of other machine learning courses available especially on coursera etc the reason why i recommend google's machine learning crash course is because it actually introduces you with a lot of terminologies which you know throughout the machine learning you will have to learn what is overfitting what is underfitting uh, etc things so i highly highly recommend this course and once you are done with this crash course you can actually go ahead and start with a much more in depth machine learning course which goes into the you know depth of different type of machine learning algorithms so one of the most famous one is obviously the machine learning course by andrew ang on coursera i will share the link of all these courses and books in the description box below so andrew's course uh, that's a really popular you know in that machine learning course that you guys can start off with but obviously a lot of people would find that not that beginners uh, you know friendly it might be a two bit you know much technical a two bit math intensive but if you have followed the first stage of you know uh, doing all the math uh, and statistical learning then you might you know be actually uh, very much able to follow the course uh, smoothly and you know learn the in depth uh, functions and different things that andrew has been teaching in that course so once you are done with the machine learning course you can move on to you know learning deep learning now deep learning is extremely important because a lot of tech companies which are working on machine learning products uh, they are definitely using deep learning as well as especially in the fields of computer vision or nlp these days so it's definitely an important thing to learn there are ton of courses uh, on deep learning especially on coursera one of the you know course or specialization on deep learning that i find most intriguing uh, and you know informative is the deep learning course in coursera by deeplearning.ai you know you will be able to learn different deep learning concepts around neural networks cnn um, nlp word to vec how to you know build a, your first image classification object detection model or how to you know create your first lsem model so i definitely recommend you to go through that specialization there are ton of you know multiple courses in that specialization so after you have finished all the above stages you have reached stage 4 which is essentially projects 
Now, even after you have learned all of this knowledge from stage one to stage three, it's extremely important to do projects because it's only through working on different machine learning projects or deep learning projects that you actually truly get to test your knowledge and also learn a lot of more, you know, so this is really an open-ended step. So, you know, it's all up to you. Uh, one of the, you know, most important sources is Kaggle. Kaggle is a really good resource, especially for this, uh, not just the machine learning projects, but because it has such large set of data sets that you can definitely make use of uh, for any type of data set on Kaggle and come up with your own ML project. Uh, so that's a great way of going about it as well as the projects that you can do on this stage can really help you to boost your own portfolio. So uh, if a goal at the end of this uh, data science machine learning roadmap is to, you know, start a career in machine learning, get hired as a data scientist, I would definitely highly recommend that you really carefully pick the projects uh, that you want to work on and try not uh, to have many, you know, maybe a lot of projects, but have a couple of projects, but that done in a very in-depth manner from, you know, data extraction to data exploration, to building models, to, you know, uh, showcasing the model results and the evolution metrics and some visualization as well. Uh, this way you can, you know, build very good portfolio for yourself and you know uh, a few good projects would be more useful than having uh, a lot of projects but not much of density in them so if you're planning uh, you know to get hired as a data scientist or machine learning engineer you can you know follow this roadmap and do your own uh, projects and courses to get hired so guys this brings us to the end of this roadmap the roadmap for learning data science let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment box below and if you found uh, this easy to follow along and also let me know if you would be following this uh, roadmap in 2023. Thank you guys for watching this video and stay tuned for my next video. Thanks.